Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back. Our topic is vectors. In this lesson, we'll learn about the concept scalar product. We have a geometric definition and algebraic definition at the top of the screen for scalar product. The notation for scalar product is the dot between the two vectors. The geometric definition of scalar product is the magnitude of vector 1 times the magnitude of vector 2 times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. The algebraic definition of the scalar product is the sum of the product of the first components of vector 1 and vector 2 plus the product of the second components of vector 1 and vector 2 plus the product of the third components of vector 1 and vector 2. Our problem reads, find the acute angle between the lines with vector equations r equals quantity 2i plus j plus k plus t times quantity 3i minus 8j minus k and r equals quantity 7i plus 4j plus k plus s times quantity 2i plus 2j plus 3k. Proceeding to the algorithm, step 1, calculate scalar product. Looking at our scalar product definitions, note the comment a and b are displacement vectors. If we're given two vectors to work with, those are displacement vectors. In this example, we're given two line equations to work with. We need to identify the component of the line equation that is the displacement vector. That's the direction vector, the vector multiplied by the scalar. To calculate scalar product, we'll use our algebraic definition, which is the sum of three products. First, the product of the x components of the vectors and again we're working with the direction vectors of the line equations the x component of the direction vector of the first equation is 3 we'll multiply that by the x component of the direction vector of the second equation which is 2 adding the product of the y components of both vectors negative 8 and 2 and adding the product of the z component of both vectors, negative 1 and 3. Simplifying, we arrive at a value of negative 13. Step 2, calculate magnitude, starting with magnitude of vector a. We want the square root of the sum of the squares of the x, y, and z components of the vector. Again, working with the direction vector first in equation 1, we have an x component of 3, 3 squared, plus a y component of negative 8 squared, plus a z component of negative 1 squared. This simplifies to the square root of 74, the magnitude of the direction vector of the second line equation is again the square root of the sum of the squares of the x, y, and z values. x is 2, 2 squared, plus y is 2, 2 squared, plus z is 3, 3 squared. And this simplifies to the square root of 17. Step 3, calculate angle looking at the geometric definition of the scalar product. The scalar product equals the product of the two magnitudes times cosine of angle. Our manipulation will be cosine of theta equals the scalar product divided by the product of the two magnitudes. Into the general formula, we can input our values in the numerator. We have the value negative 13. In the denominator, we will multiply the square root of 74 times the square root of 17. And using the inverse cosine function, we can solve for theta. Theta equals 68 point five degrees. I want to add two concluding comments to this lesson. One, if you're given a scalar product problem and you're given the angle between the two vectors and your requirement is to find the scalar product, 
you can either use the geometric definition, calculate the magnitudes, find the cosine value of the given angle, multiply those three values to arrive at the scalar product, or you can use the algebraic definition to use the x, y, and z components of the two vectors to calculate the scalar product. And two, there are two special cases of scalar product. One is parallel lines in the same direction. These lines have an angle of zero degrees. Cosine of zero is one. Thus, the scalar product of two parallel lines in the same direction is the product of the two magnitudes. The other special case is perpendicular vectors. Perpendicular vectors form a 90 degree angle. Cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Thus, regardless of the magnitudes of the vectors, multiplying by a cosine value of zero results in a scalar product of zero. Referring back to the given problem, we've completed our requirements, and this concludes the lesson on vectors, scalar product.